I wanted to talk today about something really important uh, involving 2012 and creating Eden in 2012. And one of those things I want to talk about was the 100th monkey theory. Now, a lot of people have probably heard about the 100th monkey theory. And um, I realized the other day when I was talking to a friend of mine, though, that a lot of people don't exactly know what the 100th monkey theory is. So I wanted to tell you what that is because that actually completely correlates to what's going on with us in 2012. And more importantly, the hopelessness feeling that people have when they want to be able to change something or do something for the better and yet they feel like I'm just one person and what can I do and what can one person do? And I mean, of course, one person can start a lot, you know, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Jesus, a couple examples, but very often we don't feel like we can be that one person. But So that's why I wanted to tell you all about the 100th monkey theory. As you know, I'm trying to get a global project started where everybody visualizes for two minutes a day a beautiful, wonderful, Eden-esque world in 2012 that we can step into, a world that we can create together and then step into instead of letting all the disasters and the fears that are now accumulating be created. So if you want to talk about um, a fight between light and dark, you could call it that because there's dark thoughts that are being propagated and believed in and, and they seem to have a lot of facts behind them so I'm not down on anyone who's believing them. But what I am saying is, yeah, we can create all of that. If we put enough thought into it, one of those things will end up happening. But what I'm also saying is to be proactive and create something wonderful that we want instead of something that we fear. So that is our agenda here in Eden 2012, and we hope you all join us. So to get back quickly to the 100th monkey theory uh, that I want to tell you about and, and why this is so cool. Um, the 100th monkey theory was originally, they were doing an experiment with these monkeys in a setting, a scientific setting lab, and what they were doing was they were trying to teach the monkeys to wash their hands before they ate because monkeys are always sticking their hands in their butt and everything and, and pretty much dirty, so a lot of monkeys die from illness just from transferring, you know, yucky germs and stuff into their mouth because they're eating with the same hands. So by teaching the monkeys to wash their hands, the theory was that they would live longer and not get these diseases. So they taught the monkeys how to wash their hands before they ate and the monkeys would wash their hands before they ate. Well, after they had taught a hundred monkeys this more evolved trait is basically what we're talking about of washing their hands before they ate because I'm saying it's more evolved in that when it comes down to survival of the fittest it counts who lives right so basically more monkeys were able to live that were washing their hands well here's the big wonderful thing about the hundredth monkey theory and that is its tie in to our DNA and how we evolve because what happened was after they taught the hundredth monkey in captivity in this experiment to wash their hands before they ate all of the monkeys around the world in the same species group telekinetically got the message and evolved right then and all began washing their hands monkeys in the wild all over the world in the same species. Amazing, totally amazing. And what this proved was that, and this is why we will have hope, my friends, is that at a certain number in a species, a certain critical number, when a more evolved trait is adopted that will ensure survival, all of a sudden when a certain critical number, in this case the hundredth monkey, theory. Um, not sure what that is for humans, although, you know, for a long time a lot of spiritual people have bet around that number uh, 144,000, and I never really knew what that number was, that they talked about 144,000 light workers, but now I'm starting to think that that might be the human version of our critical number for evolution. Either way, what it says is if enough of us start doing more evolved actions, if enough of us start creating something positive and, and moving and acting towards something positive and more evolved and ultimately, ultimately more loving, then at a certain point we're going to hit that critical mass. And you can't fight evolution. 
That means if we start a spiral going up of higher evolved action and higher consciousness, that at some point the rest of humans will have to jump in and spiral in because that's how evolution works. Isn't that great? That just gives me a whole lot of hope. Now, if you go Google this, uh, the hundredth monkey theory, on um, you know the different reports you'll get, things weren't quite as clear cut as the story I told you. They had some issues with whether it was all the monkeys or not, but basically that's the story. And and I'm sticking to it. No, actually, I just want to say um, we can do this. We can do this. So so please, please, please join us um, every day, just two minutes a day, in envisioning the beautiful world that you'd like to see for you and your family and your friends. And, you know, 2012 is just a few and a half years away now. And let's get started. Please join us.